Today's video is on the care and maintenance of two small iguana species, Alfred Smidi and also Defensor. You'll see that the genus has changed for Alfred Smidi and Defensor, where they used to be part of the Tenosaurs when I wrote my book. Now this Defensor seen here and the Alfred Smidi seen previously are no longer part of the genus for these other spiny-tailed iguanas such as that banana iguana, the Similis, the Baker eye. This is the Melanosterna from Honduras and there's the Alfred Smidi. A popular tourist destination in Mexico and the Yucatan Peninsula is Cancun. And if you've been there, you've been close to the habitat of Defensor and Alfred Smidi. Here's Chichen Itza, Quintana Roo, Still in Chichen Itza. Capiche, and, and the, Yucatan the Yucatan is where these iguanas are found. And this is kind of what happens. And this is what the habitat looks like. You can see why it would be difficult to find an iguana running up those trees or down under those rocks. And of course, another iguana species there that probably would feed on these smaller species if it could catch it is Tenosaur similis, the Mexican black iguana. Lots of different common names. But this is Alfred Smidi. Depending on the light and the heat, the color can vary dramatically. This one's a little cool, and while still spectacular looking, you don't see the blues and the vivid reds on it. But this species will found in the Yucatan and even down into Guatemala is hard to find in the wild. There's one colored up in blue. The females, while not quite as colorful, are still spectacular looking. But again, this one's a little bit cool. And as you saw with the male previously, one of their things they do is run to the opposite side of the branch so you can't see them. A population of Alfred Smidi has also been found in northern Guatemala. These are adult specimens, and the Alfred Smidi grow a little bit larger than the Defensor, which are considered the shortest or smallest of the iguana species. Spectacular looking lizards, males or females, whether they're fully colored or even a little bit drab. This is a female defensor. I think she recently had laid eggs here, so a little bit thin, but still a spectacular colored lizard, but not as colorful as when they're fully warmed and heated up. They're a pretty secretive lizard, and in the wild, they would spot you way before you would see them and would be moving around that branch or under a rock so you'd never find them. This is a defensor. Shedding, that's why you see so much white on it. Just spectacular animal. Well, it may look from these videos that both Alfred Smidi and Defensor are quite friendly and easy to handle. They're actually quite secretive and in their enclosures, whether inside or outdoors, they typically run and hide and you seldom see them out basking. In Phoenix, Arizona, I maintain these lizards outdoors approximately eight months of the year. From about the middle of November until about the middle of March, I maintain them indoors. 
and I make a point to keep their outdoor enclosure very similar to their indoor enclosure so as not to cause too much trouble in the transition as they move. Today we're taking a look at the Alfred Smith eye. You see I have a flat rock over the lizards and they hide inside. Put the rock back. Female must be somewhere else inside the cage. But I just have a light warmth and even a red heat light. This is their outdoor pen. You see it's shaded by mesquite trees. This is actually the winter. But it setup's just the same block little hide area, logs to climb up and bask. The block is in a tub of moist peat moss where in January, February, the lizards will dig and deposit eggs. This outdoor enclosure will be supplemented with a potted hibiscus plant and additional branches for climbing and basking. The most vivid colors are achieved during the summer when temperatures are the warmest and the lizards are basking. This is a female, Alfred Smith eye, and that's a male. That's the underneath of the female. You can see the difference, how they look. There's a male and a female, and that's a defensor male and the female. You see they don't have the same coloration on their body as the males. This is actually a male Alfred Smith eye. You see the femoral pores. This is a winter so they're not as dom prominent as they could be and you'll see the dark coloring on the neck. And this is going to be a female Alfred Smith eye and you see the femoral pores are hardly evident and it doesn't have near the coloring on the neck. This is a male defensor and next you'll see a female and again these colors can vary dramatically depending on the time of year and the temperatures. They lay eggs in the moist peat moss inside their burrow in January and February. I incubate it in a little Tupperware case in moist peat moss and two or three months later you've got hatchlings. The defensor typically lay oh, about four eggs and the Alfred Smith ice shown here will lay six eggs. And as you might expect, hatchlings of both species look very similar. Oftentimes, even adults are difficult to distinguish as their colors can vary based on age, temperatures, and just natural variations. These are some little defensor that just hatched, two of the four eggs. Hopefully the next couple eggs will hatch, but these were ones from this past year. Finger in there shows you how small they are. And as far as how I keep them, they're in the same exact setup as the adults. Use the same type cages. I haven't spoke much on diet for any of these, and as most iguanas are vegetarians, so are these. I've kept them and raised hatchlings almost exclusively There's on just vegetation, but I will add 
that they do like to eat insects, like other spiny-tailed iguanas, if offered mealworms, crickets, they will eat them. And so particularly to fatten them up, get them ready for breeding, uh, in their enclosure, I typically put a little dish and I'll feed the adult superworms. I may, might feed, uh, might feed, feed the juveniles, just some little mealworms, and they'll come out and eat those, but I give them a number of different flowers, different greens and lettuce, and there's one of the juveniles. Probably the biggest problem I have with breeding both Alfred Smidi and the defensor that's shown here are finding the eggs. The lizards are so secretive, I often go weeks at a time without seeing the adults. And they'll dig down in their peat moss and lay eggs. And when you don't see the adult lizards, if you're not digging up that enclosure, you don't realize they've laid eggs. And oftentimes, I've had the eggs dry out and go bad before I found them. Another time, I had a superworm that got loose in the peat moss and ate through the eggs before I found them. Here's a picture of the adults, and they're set up for winter. But they're a rewarding species to work with, but just not quite as outgoing as some of the other iguana species. But I hope you've enjoyed the video and maybe learned a thing or two. Take care and have a great day as you look at these Alfred Smidi that have just come in for the winter season. Have a great day.